Alright, we've just seen the announcement of the Xbox One console, the successor to the Xbox 360, and we're here in the uh, outside Xbox Command Center, which looks a lot like a living room, um, <laughs> to analyze uh, what we've just seen. So, um, guys, first things first, positive, negative, what do you think of the, of the thing overall? Well, I mean, it was very, um, it was very hardware focused, wasn't it? I think they're probably saving the, uh, the games for E3, so I think people going into that hoping to see a load of next generation games would probably have been disappointed because mm. they weren't. There weren't a lot. So it's very TV centric. Xbox, watch TV. Mm, there was a yes. lot of TV, and just when you thought you'd had all the TV, they, they brought had, some more TV. They more had TV. that TV exec lady come back on to talk about more television. Mm, yeah. Um, so a lot of TV, a lot of stuff um, about the actual TV content, but also about how it's going to be your set top box. Mm. So it's got its own EPG, so it's like programming guides and. Um, and uh, snapping, which is just like right. your way of like <laughs> alt tabbing between mm. different so video apps. People can't and... focus on anything at one time. Yeah, it was quite a multitasky sort right. of. Um, you've got setup. Star Trek going there. You've got a TV show. You're yeah. skyping a friend. You're playing a game. Yeah, yeah. But it's I... like Martin McFly's son in Back to the Future 2. You've got all screens <laughs> going at once. Checking Twitter, sort of throughout the thing, there was a lot of kind of negativity towards the emphasis on TV stuff. I sort of, I, I can kind of understand that. I, f I feel like a lot of people were there for you know watching for the games. These are the the guys who are going to tune in onto the stream are the kind of hardcore game fans. Right, by definition, the people yeah. who are watching the stream are the ones who want to see the games yeah. the most. But that's not sort of what Microsoft positions this reveal mm. for, really. I mean, it's it's obviously still deeply invested in, in keeping gamers, mm. but it's got E3 in but, in but a matter of days. Mm. So it really needs to sell this Xbox to, to its shareholders and, yeah, and to and everyone else as being this is the centre of everyone's living room. Mm. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, the reception among the the people who want their Xbox for video games is like well this isn't this isn't strictly for me. What's really interesting is that actually um, there is a, you know one of the things that kind of flashed by almost in an instant was this idea of HDMI in as well as out mm -hmm. so you can actually plug maybe your existing set top box and maybe that's what they're relying on it, it's not necessarily going to be streamed right. through the internet or things like that but it will maybe communicate with with existing set top boxes in different countries it's difficult to speculate on stuff until yeah. it actually comes out. Okay, um, in terms of how it's how it uh, sized up against the PS4 reveal, mm. um, the PS4 was really big on, on sharing mm. and and they mentioned that. They mentioned yeah. the sort of um, PVR style recording and yeah. sharing and it said it had like native video editing tools. Mm. So it's it's got all of that. They didn't give it quite the same kind of emphasis, emphasis but yeah. they did say, yeah, we've got that. Um, and uh, perhaps in I, well, we, we can never know if it was in response to the PlayStation 4 and, and how it caught a little bit of flack for never actually showing the box. Mm. That was the first, that was one of the first things we saw after right. the, the spiel <laughs> from um, from yeah. Matrick about you know how strong Xbox is as a brand mm. and what we've done. Um, they were like, here you go, here's here's the box, it and like. it looks like a stealth, like you say, like a stealth bomber. It's mm. all right. kind of like edges and planes. It's like it's totally invisible to radar yeah. now. A big old box. Assuming the controller, to the controller is the same yeah. size, we'll put up a picture now. Assuming the controller mm. is the same size ish yeah. as the current controller, then yeah, the, the box looks. And Connect is up. huge. Has it, has it made you excited about Connect again? Because this feels like it's sort of what Connect was always supposed to be that level of accuracy that wasn't there in the first one. Yeah, so it was, what, was, what were the new specs? It was like 1080p. 1080p HD, it can, it can work out balance and things like that. Apparently, it can tell your heartbeat. I find that enormously <laughs> Does it alert the emergency services if, if it drops? Uh, that would be amazing. But yeah. how? How would it do that? Is it, I don't can know. it see, uh, does it have a heat vision? Can it see your blood coursing yeah. through your veins? <laughs> that, that may be it actually. Um, I can't think of any other way other than infrared. This has got really sensitive hearing. Yeah. Like here. Here above here the sound of Call of Duty. Um, We're talking about the integration between um, Smart Glass and Connect and the controller, trying to bring those mm. three things. I was convinced that was going to be the moment where they brought them together and there was a Wii U style controller. I'm going to keep banging that drum until like they, they say totally definitively. At uh, E3, you'd be like, show yeah. me the Smart Glass <laughs> yeah. Wii tablet type controller. Where are you hiding controller? it, Patrick? I know it's here somewhere. <laughs> Is it here? Because, yeah. yeah. you know, otherwise you've got to have the tablet balanced on your lap and you can't really use both at the same time. They seem to suggest there'd be a bit more. I mean, they've. They, they that shot they showed of the three things connect in the middle and the controller and smart glass on each side i assumed there was going to be some Merging. explanation of how they were all going to work together did they show us the back of the controller no it although it, just, yeah. <laughs> it, it did say that the, the connect could see the controller now which actually you know in terms of motion control games i know that's not the most popular thing in the world mm. but at the very least it now gives you something physical that you can wave around yeah. like you know yeah. that wasn't available in connect so games Excited? Games. What did you? What, well, what did you? What took your fancy? 
Uh, well, they they said they had a lot in development. Um, they've got. Oh, good. I'm glad yeah. they thought about that. Right. <laughs> so they've got fifteen. 15 uh, yeah, platform exclusives, eight of which are new, new IPs. IPs. Right. Uh, that they just they don't want to tell us about just yet. That sounds healthy. Does so. that include what we saw on stage? Well, it's got to include Quantum, Quantum Break. Break. Yeah. And Forza. Yeah. Yeah. But not Ghosts, obviously, because that's going to be multi-platform. No. The Call of Duty Ghosts uh, DLC is going to be first on Xbox One, like it is at the moment mm. on Xbox 360, which means they're going to sort of try and keep Xbox as the home of Call of Duty, which yeah. makes sense. I think, yeah, you know, like, y using Call of Duty as a way of saying, you know what, nothing's going to change into the next generation. If you want the best Call of Duty experience, it's probably going to be on Xbox. If you want the earliest um, Call of Duty experience, <laughs> yes, that's well, certainly that, on Xbox, yeah. I w yeah, I, I mean, I would hope Sony's kind of up their game in terms of the multiplayer stuff, but yeah. you, you've got to hope that Live is going to be, a, you know, still as good, if not yeah. better, a place to play multiplayer mm -hmm. games. Um, what about the game itself? Like, what, what little we saw? That dog. adorable dog in a mocap suit. Really heavy <laughs> emphasis on the dog as well. Yeah. Not just like, here's a dog, here's a dog in motion capture. He was present at yeah. every stage of that Call of Duty Ghosts reveal. I think yeah. he's going to be a character. character. He's definitely like a squad member. Yeah. Because he's he's always present. Lieutenant Barks um, and oh. Yeah. And he's in his like battle dress. He's got a little ear tattoo <laughs> yeah. and scratches on his nose. Oh my god. And so there's a little, go little ghost mask. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff based around like natural disasters. There was a lot of flooding. It was um, a lot of smoke and yeah. underwater. So maybe like geo terrorists blowing up. Stuff, yeah, it could be. Triggering natural disasters. I don't know, it's written by the guy who wrote Traffic. I don't know, have you seen that? Yes, I didn't like it very much. Yeah, it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we had uh, Quantum Break also uh, announced a new IP uh, from Remedy, the guys behind Alan Wake. Um, as our, our resident science officer, what did you make of Quantum Break? It's been allocated to me because yeah. it has the word has Quantum, the word quantum, quantum in it. That's um, I, uh, I have a soft spot for Remedy mm. and I will mm. make certain allowances even for Alan Wake. Uh, what do we get from it? So there's a little girl. Um, and a, a mother, mother. Or, and, and she's if like, what, what makes that you... mother has been in, uh, it's really annoying me, so you can put that in the comments. Some sort of cable mm. show. Like yeah, so she's like, why are you so creepy, creepy kid? And the creepy kid's like, here, let me show you, and touches the woman, and then she has a vision of uh, a super tanker a crashing super to a bridge. bridge. That sort of like, um, I don't know, like phases sideways in space. Yeah. Um, mm. Sort of like jump sideways and into a bridge. And that looks like a sort of pseudo quantum effect. Okay. You know, you might, you might <laughs> propose that as a, as a sort of quantum phenomenon. So we predict you play play a little girl who crashes super tankers into bridges with her mind. I don't know. Is she the player character? Who's the player character <laughs> here? There's a the ship. You play as the ship. It's like battleships. You say like the grid reference, and she crashes a tanker into a bridge. <laughs> at that There's not reference. a lot we can take away um, I connect. from that. To be, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. You said yeah. you saw you, th you thought you saw a butterfly in yeah. the end, sort of like. So as it smashes, I thought that the uh, glass okay. maybe turned into a butterfly. And that butterfly. suggests that's chaos effects, suggests. And mm. sciencey things. Yeah. So butterfly effect, starring acid pitch. Yes, that's exactly what it suggests. Good. I'm hoping it's, it's, a, it's an adaptation. Finally. Max Payne was a, ah. a, a spoof on, okay. on you know, like noir and graphic yeah. novels yeah, yeah, and comic yeah. books. Yeah. Alan Wake was, I, I guess, if you were being kind, like um, something similar about. Stephen King type horror, or yeah. like Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, so, uh, well. yeah. So if this is their their equivalent for sci-fi, sci-fi. Yeah, that yeah. could be interesting. No, yeah. Okay. Do you remember down the way there was that uh, Twilight Zone sort of sci-fi? Yeah, like the scary program. Or yeah, or like Twilight Zone sort of thing. Something Springs. Yeah. yeah. Night, Night Springs. Night Springs. Yeah. If it, if it was if it was the, the video game of Night Springs. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but I think they really played a little bit with that with uh, with Alan Wake, so yeah. that might be, be a bit too close. How do you guys feel about a Halo television series that is also maybe a bit interactive but in non-specific ways? Vaguely <laughs> Well, <laughs> But has Steven Spielberg? But has Steven Spielberg doing what? Playing Pong. Right. Pretty yeah. soon. It's just going to keep cutting back. The framing narrative is Steven Spielberg playing <laughs> Pong. And I even started playing Pong in 1974. <laughs> Pong. With Master Chief. Right. So, personally, um, it doesn't float my boat. Mm. Does it really? But... I did see a bit of the Halo uh, Unto Dawn, Ford, Ford, Ford Unto Dawn, Dawn. Yeah. and that was really good, uh, and I think that did really well, and I can see that, that if you were into Halo, that would be, mm. that would be kind of cool for you. Um, I know people who are really into the Halo mythology, and it seems like if you're actually really into it, there's a mm. lot there that they can work with. Mm. I've talked about Halo, the Halo movie, an honest to goodness Halo movie, for such a long time, yeah. and maybe this is how it has to go. And Steven Spielberg might look at it every so often. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> He's clearly yeah. a producer on it. I mean, he couldn't even be bothered to turn <laughs> up to the show. The guy who gave us boom blocks. So. Yeah. He's there on his yacht going, hey, I'm really sorry I can't. Really <laughs> I'd just... really like to, but I, not really. No, so. I just didn't want no. to come. Yeah. I wish I could be there with you today in person, but like all of you here today, 
I've been playing games for decades. Well, what's interesting is that they they sort of announced the the existence of Xbox Entertainment Studios or Microsoft Entertainment mm. Studios, which is I mean, obviously Netflix has been getting into making their own TV shows, as has Amazon, uh, and so it seems like Microsoft's kind of throwing their hat into the ring as far as that stuff's concerned. That would make well. sense as, as a sort of um, entry point for them. Yeah, like, yeah. Halo is theirs. It's a proven mm. proven success of sorts with Forward Unto yeah. Dawn. And uh, yeah, all these people who aren't traditionally like content creators of their own yeah. in terms of TV content creation um, are sort of getting into that with like Amazon and Netflix, yeah. like you say. Because that's what they did with House of Cards on Netflix. They looked at what people were watching and made a TV show for those people. <laughs> so, uh, right. heaven, Game no, of heaven knows what Game <laughs> Crossed with, um, yeah. I don't know. Breaking Bad. People, yeah, Breaking Bad. With more nudity. <laughs> <laughs> Medieval yeah. meth dealers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's the next big thing. Forza? Couple of very shiny cars well, you, driving you, you very shiny. That, that orange paint, that was so yeah. sh shimmery. Those, uh, those were a couple uh, of McLarens, Jane. Did you? Yeah. you did you, you know that? that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, everything looked very sharp and shiny and mm. lots of lens flare. At least they didn't dwell on like the the upholstery fabric. Like, <laughs> yeah. In that, in that, um, Although there was like a lingering, a lingering shot seats. of some tire wear. Yeah, but show us. Don't tell us. Yeah. Don't tell us about. How I love that stuff. The right? nape of the fabric <laughs> really, like swished in either direction or something. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that they were talking about thing. You see the ravages of time or whatever. It was. <laughs> yeah. They were talking about the new engine. Yeah. It's a new engine, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it pretty much has to be. Yeah. And and they were saying that the effects of weather. And I don't know temperature and also time. <laughs> yeah, I just imagine the time? driver being like the guy at the end of Indiana Jones and the last yeah. crusade, just like withering aging, dust yeah, the wheel, visibly exactly. yeah. aging. To he death. chose poorly. He got into the wrong <laughs> rail car. Yeah, if you fall too far behind, you start rapidly aging. <laughs> that would be horrifying. <laughs> be. Oh, uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was the uh, the triggers have force feedback in them now on the computer. really. Yeah, did you not? catch that. No, I missed that one. Yeah, so there's feedback in the triggers as well as in the actual pad. Does that versions. mean like varying resistance? So like... I, I, I assume so. I, I don't know exactly what you meant by that, but I assume you get kind of, yeah, resistance. Mm. And, yeah, that's kind of cool. Also, um, they were talking about achievements are going to change with the way they right. share. Dynamic mm. achievements, not just about what you've done, but yeah. how you did it or something. It's right, interesting exactly. that they identify something that is the reason I use achievements. I know a lot of people go in to just get all the achievements in a game. That's not really how I do it. I like to look back at my achievements and think, oh, that's the kind of path I, I mm. sort of took through that game. And these are the cool things that I did, not by accident, but you yeah. know, those are the things I managed to do and I, I didn't spend ages grinding. And that was something they mentioned. They said it was going to tell the story of how you played games and stuff as part of this dynamic yeah. achievements thing. I wonder what that means. Yeah, because as, as they exist now, achievements are like t uh, wholly like quantitative things mm. right and if you're saying it's going to tell a story then all you can do is just start like subdividing them like smaller achievement awards for for doing little mm. things unless it's um it becomes kind of like a uh either or sort of yeah thing. like, like a you made this did you choose this sort of like those less effect and... stats that come out after they after you play it oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Game. it tells you how yeah. many people did one thing or the other there was yeah. not a great deal on achievements no. and i think it's interesting to speculate but there's they not mentioned it at the same time as that. the video stuff though which is quite interesting because i guess maybe what will happen is you can you know when you get an achievement it will record the how many seconds of video it took to get that so you might get a yeah you might get a, a, a sort of video clip of the achievement you just got oh that would be interesting dumped out which would yeah, be brilliant yeah. because the moment you can upload that, that to wherever and go look i did this yeah finally. yeah and that would that would feed into the not just not just that you've got this achievement but how you got this achievement yeah. achievements become dynamic and changing they tell your personal story of how you play not just what you've done all right, so that was our immediate response to the Xbox One reveal. Come on back to OutsideXbox.com and YouTube.com slash OutsideXbox for more. And tell us what you thought of the Xbox One in the comments, if you would. See you next time. Bye.